Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. It's weird how much college, like, you, you're, uh... I think you grow into yourself. Yeah, and, like, you literally your personality just flips for, like, a lot of people, too. Yeah. I think mine was because I got elected recruitment chair in my fraternity, and so I kind of had to go and talk to a bunch of random people. Uh -huh. And then I started realizing, like, talking to random people isn't scary. And then I just started talking to more random people. And the more I did it, the more I got more comfortable with it, the better I got at it, the more confidence I had, and then I just enjoy it now. So what do you think you found, like, scary about it to start with? Uh, I just never had to do it, and so I didn't want to do it because I didn't do it. Like, I was like, this is I'm me. Familiar. I'm this person that doesn't talk to people. I'm shy. Mm -hmm. That was who I thought I was. And then I realized, like, no, that's kind of stupid. <laughs> like, I think my biggest, like, realization was, like, even someone like my sister who doesn't shut up, uh -huh. like... She is initially a little bit, like, not shy, but, like, doesn't really want to go talk to someone new, but does it anyway, because she knows that if you don't, it's more awkward in the end. Okay, okay. And so, like, it's just, if you just go and make the first step, most people are willing to, like, reciprocate, but nobody wants to make, take the first step. I know, yeah, so always... I just started taking the first step and realized, like, people reciprocate. They don't actually care. They want to talk. They're just too afraid to take the first step. That's how I kind of feel. I feel like I'm pretty good socially, but, like... Making the first step, like I, yeah, I, I think I'm so bad about the starting talking point. Yeah, but see, what I also realize is like what you say doesn't matter so uh -huh. much as the fact that you said something first. That's what matters. Good point. And because like, like how you present nobody yourself. remembers what the first sentence you said to them was. It's the fact they remember you came up to them and talked to them and like were nice in your tone or whatever. Probably what they remember more than anything is how you made them feel and based off first impression. Yeah. Like how they felt about you. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. One of the things I learned is like in one of my recruitment workshops, my fraternity uh -huh. was like just to ask people questions because everyone loves to talk about themselves. So, so like true. just get them to talk about themselves and they'll, they'll enjoy your conversation more and they'll think you were cool. But in reality, you just had them talk about themselves. Yeah. There's a, I actually try to apply that on this podcast, but there's like, yeah. I think it's like a 60, 40, 70, 30 kind of rule. Okay. Um, uh, that you, you want to get, uh, like, you don't want to just only have them talk about themselves. Yeah, like, yeah, you want to give yeah. your own input so that you're not, like, just anybody else. So it's not like an interview, but you want to get the person talking more than you do. Yeah. And obviously, that, there's a give and take with that, but the, depending on the individual. But uh, I don't, it, it just, it makes sense. It makes sense. People, like, even people that are quiet, like, I would, I would argue that like they still want to talk. Yeah. Especially, they like to talk about the things that are interesting to them. Like, exactly. I love it whenever you're having a conversation with someone, and then you just see like their eyes light up, and they like sit up, and they're like, okay, well, this is this, and this is this, because this, and I know this. And then it's like, okay, this person actually gives a shit about this thing. Especially whenever they're more reserved, like, early yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Like, I was, I was trying to, like, I don't know, like, I had one, one example's coming to mind. I had a podcast with four, or three, four people total, three friends. Okay. And two of the people were talking like a fair amount, but the other guy was really quiet. Uh -huh. And I, I felt like, uh, I don't know. Like I, it's not just because it's like my podcast. Like mm -hmm. I'll do this out like socially as well, yeah. but I always feel like an obligation or like a responsibility to try to try to do the best in my power to like include that other person in the I conversation. Mean, yeah. Just cause like, like, yeah, like you don't want to make them feel ostracized. Absolutely. Cause they, they want to talk. They want to be heard. Yeah. They Everybody just don't likes to be heard. Wanna, like, Feel like they're intruding. Nobody wants to feel like they're intruding. Everybody wants to feel like they belong. Or maybe they have a less, um, a more passive personality, like a less yeah. dominant personality, yeah. and they uh, they don't want to be like they don't want to interrupt, or they don't want to interject, or anything like that. It's true. Sometimes, sometimes those are like some of the coolest people, like that. The, some of the just the coolest minds. Yeah, like yeah. those introverts just that don't just don't get it out very much. Absolutely. Yeah, quiet people are pretty interesting for the most part. Mm -hmm. I feel like everybody is interesting if you talk to them about the right things, though. Absolutely. There's some people you don't talk about certain things with, because it's like, some people with politics are, like, super annoying. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so opinionated. Politics are annoying. I don't... But they're necessary. I, they're not my favorite topic, uh, that's for sure, but yeah. I don't mind talking about them that much. Yeah. Objectively. Like, I'll talk with somebody who's very objective, but if they have their side... They have their mind made up regardless of what side you like, whatever, whatever side you're on, like, I don't care. I just, yeah. I just want to have an objective argument. I got you. Or no, not even an argument, just like a conversation. Yeah. I mean, it's, you can definitely tell the people who 
are attached to their ideas and the people who see their ideas as ideas. And like, whenever someone just like attacks me or like what you think, I'm like, okay, that's not, I'm not, I'm not interested anymore. Because you are not your ideas. <laughs> yeah. That's what people need to get over. They like attach their like personal identity to their, their thoughts or ideas or opinions or whatever. It's hard not to, but yeah. So yeah, it is, it's difficult to be objective. It really is a skill too. You gotta, you gotta work at it a lot. Mm -hmm. Most people are bad at it, but at first you get better. You just gotta work on it. It's like everything. I, I think it's, uh, I don't know, this is not from my cocky point of view, but I think this is one of my strengths. And yeah. with, like, the, the only, I think it's pretty easy, not all the time, like you said, it's, it, it's difficult in a lot of senses. Especially there are certain things I hold a lot closer to myself than other things. <laughs> Same. Uh, certain opinions, whatever it may be. But I, I think it's pretty easy just knowing, like, just having the humility to embrace that, like, Yo, like I'm not that intelligent. I'm only one person. Like I'm, yeah. I, I'm so limited. Like I have so yeah. many limitations. Right. Like I know a lot about one thing, but about most things, I don't know shit. But it, like, even if I know a ton about this thing, and somebody has a different philosophy, for like example, I know a lot about soccer. Okay. But yeah. somebody's running the philosophy like, oh, have you ever considered this formation? Like it's more effective if you do this. It's like, it's like, yeah. oh, like I've never heard of that personally. And instead of just closing myself off to it, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll listen to what this guy has to say. I'll, I'll hear this dude out. It's a very important skill. I definitely feel like you're good at that. I, I bet the podcast probably helped a lot, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That, that Thinking about it, like, this time last year, yeah, it's it's really, really helped. Just, oh, yeah. Just in general, hearing different perspectives. like Yeah, yeah. Once you hear just the different, the amazing amount of differences, like same or different people can talk about the same exact thing and come at it from completely different ways you know what else helps just for like anybody who's gone through the experience is college like yeah because i feel like college yeah. is like the it's like a forced the, the most like uh open-minded lack of judgment to an extent to an extent yeah uh just just uh especially freshman year yes yes like, like freshman year those first two weeks are just like something of beauty because like you'll just go knock on some random dude's door and be like hey what's up i've seen you you want to go do something and hang out and people are like yeah and then after the first week everyone's like i have my friends you have your friends I want to talk to you. <laughs> and like you stop going and knocking on people's doors yeah like, true. like it's like that first two week period where you make friends and then that's it that's who you are that's totally true that is yeah. so true it's weird. Everybody's so lost, and they're like, it's like yeah, accepted to be a lot, like lost. Yeah. yeah. But then after two weeks, like you're supposed to, I figured it out. Oh, I figured it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is my friend group. This is who I hang out with. These are my. These are my people. These are my people. I, I posted pictures of them on Instagram. Uh, it's uh, it's official now. Yeah. Yeah. That is a dumb concept. Like. Yeah. Just just the the, the, the thought like, of being found completely is dumb too. Oh yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't think anyone really does. I'm just trying to do what I enjoy. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't fucking know. It's not a bad way to be, though. The future's uncertain. It always will be. And oh, yeah. VR terrifies me. VR, what do you mean? Like, virtual reality. Oh, we're going that route. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, just like, uh, you know, the last 10 years, like 10 years ago, 2008, cell phones were, like, clunky and, like, weird and nobody really knew what they were, like, what they were going to be. They weren't smartphones yet. Like, what was that, 2008? We're, we're talking, like, the, the Rumor first or, like, iPhone. Razor? Yeah, exactly, like, the Razor. I think I had the NV3, which uh, is, like, the flip phone where I had the full keyboard. I was right. like, this is sick. I have a keyboard and a big screen. But, like, it wasn't a smartphone. I didn't have apps. You no, know, it didn't have the internet on it, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd push the internet button on accident. like, no, no, cancel, 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 <laughs> cancel. Data, data. Yeah, exactly. And, like, My parents are going to kill me. Now everyone has an iPhone or... Uh, smartphone, I guess, mm -hmm. and like, I think VR is going to be the next thing like that. Where mm -hmm. right now it's kind of like you got this big headset and these big hand things if you want to do VR right, and like in the next ten years it'll just be these slim glasses you slip on and like these nice like football style gloves. Everything's in there, and you'll be playing video games in a VR world instead of on your Xbox. It's it's weird, and it's gonna. I mean, uh, the, the Elon Musk. And uh, uh, Joe Rogan podcast where they talk about this terrifies me because Elon Musk is a really smart dude. I respect him. And he says, and I, it's obvious to people, it's like eventually VR will be as good as reality. And maybe that takes 100 years. Maybe it takes 50. Who knows? Not me. I, no one knows. But like eventually it will be as good as reality. 
It's the fact that's that you when shit gets terrifying. That's where it gets just, just fucking weird. Because man. then, like, so, like, for me, I like, you know, conservation and preserving the outdoors. And my sentiment was always that, you know, eventually shit will get so fucked up that people will see it and be like, okay, we have to do something because obviously we're fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. But with the advent of VR, I mean, there's a possible reality where, you know, the rich people can have contacts to put in that make the boggy swamp that looks like it's tar infested and full of chemicals makes it look like a nice field with things prancing around and you can pretend that it's not fucked up so you get like a like a, a society that some people are living in this fantasy land and then on the other half people are seeing i mean suffering. probably the, the people that are poor that can't afford the, the virtual reality they're mm -hmm. they're like forced to see reality for what it really is yeah but like even if you have the money are you really going to want to see it as an illusion like I think I think a lot of people like to just be told how things are and that it's okay. But people just like to be consoled, like, it's fine, it's fine. It's kind of like goes back to the question, like, would you rather face the truth? Like, red pill or blue yeah. pill? Like, yeah. face the truth exactly. or, like, hide it, hide in this fantasy land of a lie? Yeah. Like, what, what, and a lot of people, a lot of people are going to hide from the truth. Yep. Yeah. That terrifies me. Dude, like, the, the fact that the two realities just get intertwined to where you couldn't even differentiate which reality you're in yeah, like yeah. If, whenever you okay so hypothetically speaking whenever you go into this virtual reality world whatever it is like are they going to be able to implant like new memories new concepts of yes, self I don't know. new opinions like I don't know about that. are you literally going to become a different person or are you going to be you just in a different world i mean i would imagine it would be totally different because no video game is about real life no video game is like, oh, you're just you prancing around in the street. You know, every video game is about, like, this crazy society where, like, you're a gladiator. Or, like, you're trying to kill people. You're in a war zone. You know, stuff like that. Like, people don't want to escape to another reality that's the same. They want to go to somewhere where it's crazy. They want to go to somewhere where it's just stimulating. Mm. And, yeah. You know, what's, here's a weird thought. So, like... Say you go to like a virtual reality. This is like a personal development point okay. of view on this. So, extremely abstract idea. But say you go into like a virtual reality, hypothetically speaking, you could somehow alter time, therefore like slow down time or your like perception of time so that you could process, uh, I don't know, let's say maximum like, like optimal time in comparison to normal time is like, um, I don't know, you can, you can take in like, 10 times the amount of information in the virtual reality as you can in like okay, so real reality. You could use that to learn a ton in a short amount of time, basically. Yes. And then somehow, like, not even necessarily download information to your mind, but take in information to your mind yeah. at a much quicker rate than humans have ever been able to yeah. live before. I mean, the, there definitely is some upside to VR like that. That would be awesome. Is right? that is that hypothetical or is that I abstract? See, I don't know if you could slow down time like that. I don't. I really have no idea. I don't know either. I mean, they say time is relative, but like, I don't think it's like that. That'd be cool, though. I mean, and th that, that is true. I bet you VR will also be used for other things that are positive. Like, you know, you can, most people learn by doing, learn from experience. Mm -hmm. Well, you can experience working on, like, dearming a bomb and then have it blow up on you because you messed up and you got that experience. Your fingers were sweating. You, your heartbeat went crazy and you saw the explosion, but, like, you're actually in a chair, okay? Mm. And so things like that, there definitely are positive applications of it. Like, like, imagine if they can, like, alter your dream states. Like, you're practicing oh, jujitsu in your sleep. Mm. You know, like, you're like every I mean, night you uh, go to bed, and you're just, like, uh, within two weeks, you're you're almost a black belt in jujitsu. What's it called? Uh, lucid dreaming. That's becoming a big thing, where you can, like, train yourself to know you're in a dream. That's crazy. Yeah. I've had a buddy who's successfully lucid dreamed. Like, apparently his method was he would, like, point or poke his finger or poke... My poke apologies. He would poke his hand with his finger, and then whenever he got in the dream state, it would go right through. So that registered to his mind, like the self awareness to know, "Hey, I'm in a dream. I can do whatever the hell I want now." That's crazy. There, there's also this. I don't, uh, even, like, I don't even really dream much anymore. It's so sad. Like, I don't remember my dreams at all. Really? Yeah. It's weird. If you not to tell you what to do, but if you if you write down your dreams yeah. right after you wake up, so if you get in like the habitual routine of, hey, like whenever I wake up, just write it down real quick. 
Huh. I don't know. Like I, I did it for, I don't know, probably two months. And I remember yeah. my dreams, like, Way excuse better. me, my recall of the dreams was significantly better, like huh. significantly better. Maybe. But then like I quit doing it and I kind of feel the same way. Like very rarely do I remember dreams my dreams. so weird. I still have some dreams, like from when I was a kid that I remember vividly though. Mm. Like I had, I have an old house. Like I used to, I lived there before I was in third grade. Uh -huh. And there's one dream that I remember vividly in that house. So like before I, you know, I was like nine and I still vividly remember that dream. Mm. Like it's super weird how that works to me. Cause then like the last week I don't remember a single dream. That is wild. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just the, the trauma? Was it was it trauma or was Kinda. it just... Kinda, yeah. Yeah, like someone was chasing me for sure and shooting at me and like, it was an intense one. So I guess the significance helps your recall? Possibly. Or maybe you replay it in your mind because it was like the first time having that wild dream experience so you're like, holy shit. Like, yeah. I just remember it for like ever. It could be. Definitely. I, I think there's something to like first experiences being more impactful just because you're body and brain are just like, whoa, what is this? Whoa. And then after that, like, it kind of settles down. Okay. Like, I, I, did, I did hot yoga uh, this break for the first time. Very cool. And after, like, a half an hour, I literally had to just sit down and stop just so I could breathe. Because uh -huh. it was so hot and so steamy, like, I couldn't breathe, and I was, like, about to pass out for sure. And I was just sitting there breathing, like, do not pass out. Do not pass out. You are not doing that. <laughs> yeah. That would be scary, dude. Like, it was intense. Okay, I've heard if you like weigh yourself like before and after, like the water weight you lose is oh, insane. I guarantee you, I lost at least like two pounds in sweat. Wow. Like the 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 instructor at one point like walked around and sprayed people with cold water. Uh -huh. She brought me a cold towel as well. <laughs> <laughs> like I looked around, no one else got a cold towel. Beginner. <laughs> yep. 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 She like starts hazing you, just smacking you in the butt. <laughs> Get down, pledge. Yeah, basically. Forehead to uh, forehead to uh, concrete. Like, it, was, it was hard. That it was a workout, man. Mm. I would go again. I would try again. I want to get through one and actually do like the whole thing, but my body was not ready for that. Mm -hmm. It was also the day after Christmas. So, I mean, I ate a lot of food, sat around, and did nothing, and then went straight into a hot yoga hour long session. So, okay, so yeah, probably not the yeah. best timing. And like, I definitely didn't get as much sleep the night before as I should have. Okay, so. Dude, that's that. really cool you did, though, like, regardless. Yeah, that's my really sister's cool. friends were gone, and my sister was going to go, and mm -hmm. she had never done it either. And I was just like, screw it, let's try. Never. I did yoga. So I did a beer yoga class one time. A beer yoga class? Yeah, right? It was fun. It was more like stretching and drinking beer than mm -hmm. yoga, though. Because comparatively, this hot yoga, that shit's hard. Like, that's it's a workout. Like, you're sweating. Uh -huh. You're, like, fighting to focus on what your body's doing, like... It was it was a it was a tough workout. I was, That's I was sore. My arms were sore from that. Yoga is underrated. Yeah, yeah, the little I've done, I haven't done. I've done like yeah. one legit it's, class. It's kind of expensive though. I mean, like not too bad. It was sixteen bucks for a class, but like okay. if you were to do it twice a week, thirty dollars a week. That adds up. Yeah, so I mean, I get why you can probably get like a pass or something. I'm sure, but still, I'm sure know. there's like monthly rates or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool though. That's cool you've done. I like hiking more because it's like free exercise. Mm -hmm. just, I go to the hiking trail, I hike a loop, and then I go home, and it costs me nothing. Exactly. That's gas. Like I guess that's a cost, but still. You probably still get the same. Uh, maybe not the same, but similar. Uh, I guess benefits from. It. Yeah, yeah. Not as much cardio with hiking. You don't really get cardio. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like it's nice. And I just I also enjoy the silence. I like the quiet. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite part. I, I miss literally one of the things I miss the most since my trip is the quiet. Like it's never really quiet anymore. Because mm. when you're in a house, you know you've got water going, you've got the air conditioning, the heater, whatever it is going. Like dogs, people, no, like there's just so much noise. Yeah. And like the street outside, everything. And I never realized until I was in a place for six months where it was pretty damn quiet. Like, even in a pretty uh, modest neighborhood. Yeah, like, here it's pretty quiet, actually. But you can hear the dogs yeah, running around. Yeah. Other than that, yeah, it's pretty quiet. Yeah, yeah that, that wee's been running for, like, ever. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird to think about. Yeah. But, I, like, I mean, if we sat here for five minutes, we'd hear something. Like, a dog oh, would definitely, run definitely. Something. That's why I like hiking, though, because I just, for, like... You know, usually I'll hear like a car or two, because 
you know, your nearest roads. But for the most part, it's pretty quiet. Serene. So nice. And like, Serenity. The noises you do hear are like the wind blowing through the trees or like the birds chirping or like a deer running away as you come up on it. Like stuff like that. Not stuff you kind of want to hear. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool. Like you feel like connected with shit. Whereas mm-hmm. the noise here makes me like kind of go like a little crazy. That interconnectedness of nature is like, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. it yeah. I spent a ton of time out in the woods when I was younger and I feel like, I feel like it's I have cognitive us. benefits from it now. Yeah. Is, that, is that weird to say? No, nah, like, I think, I think being in the woods is really good. I think one of the things that, especially for kids growing up now, it's going to mm-hmm. be hard for them to be alone in a quiet place. Like if you put a kid in a quiet room, then 10 minutes, they'd be going crazy. Right. And like, that's not good. You should be able to be alone with yourself for like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Like I I try to meditate for like 10 minutes. I don't do it every day, but like every other, Mm -hmm. for sure every third. And it's hard to sit down for 10 minutes and just listen to quiet. Oh, in theory it sounds, it's like, oh, 10 10 minutes? minutes? Easy. Nah, by the end, I'm like itching to look at my phone to see how much time is left. But that's how I know. I'm like, okay, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Mm-hmm. And it's hard. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. We've, we've conditioned ourselves to constant yeah. stimulation. Yeah, it grabs your phone. Look at your phone. Uh-huh. Grab your computer. Grab the Xbox. Grab the TV remote. Grab the book. Whatever it is, it's just stimulation constantly. It's crazy. And like that's, <laughs> my mom read a, a Facebook post the other night, <laughs> and it said, yesterday I was at Starbucks, and I saw a guy sitting there. He didn't have a phone. Didn't have a computer. He was just sitting there drinking his coffee like a fucking psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> and I, mean, I laughed, but then I was just like, "Why is that funny? Like, that 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 shouldn't." Be. That's really funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like, right? That's how it is today. Like, if you sit there for ten minutes quietly just drinking coffee, people think you're a psychopath. And that 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 was normal until. 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, sure. It was totally normal. I was just like, yeah, you just sit there and drink your coffee. Maybe you read the paper. But that's it. And now it's just like, oh, you should be on your laptop doing something. You should be on your phone doing something. Mm-hmm. The people who are on their phone doing something constantly are never really doing something. They're like playing Candy Crush or like reading Facebook posts or reading mm-hmm. Reddit posts or whatever it is. People that's my do. problem, man. I, I, I have a problem with like uh, refreshing Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I deleted Facebook. Good for you. For that, that helps. I've really like trimmed down my Instagram follower list. I don't have the app, but I still load it on my browser. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have one of I have like yeah. six accounts. So one of my accounts, and I do the same. Yeah, yeah, and like, it's. I think it's good to keep up with your friends on social media a little bit, like, because whenever I like tried to go completely no social media when I came back, mm-hmm. and like I kind of just felt excluded and I felt like I was excluding myself which was stupid and I was just like yeah. I don't like relate to people as much I don't think that's and, the answer yeah, I, yeah, I think I, a lot of people that there's a big push to this like pull of so like of social media yeah. this, this pull that's constantly pulling all of us I don't think that's and right. some people just go one extreme to the other but I, I think it's somewhere in the middle I think yeah. it's somewhere in the middle especially if we have accessibility to this technology I think we yeah. might as well use it just in moderation I think moderation is just the key to everything same for me, for me, my life, moderation is the key because even video games, I like playing video games sometimes with my friends. Like mm-hmm. we're on a game playing together for like a half hour. Sure. Fun. But then like the second I start playing more and the second I start doing that more, then it's like making me miss other opportunities mm-hmm. because of it. And then I start to think like, well, why am I doing this? Like, I hate this, but I'm still doing it. And yeah. it's just, it's important to limit things for me. Like even reading books, like I don't. Since I've been home, I've had free time, but I haven't just sat there and read all day. Yeah. Because I don't want to. Like, I've, I've read, like, 100 pages of Blink, and, like, it's been really good. But I read, like, 5 pages here, 10 pages there, 15 pages there. And then I go do other things. Absolutely. And I think that's really important. Especially a conceptual book like that. that yeah. That, that takes a lot of brain power a, to read that really book. It's a really cool book. I, I, I really like it so far. It's, it's neat. It's, like... So, uh, one of the comments on the back is that the tipping point helps explain the world around us, and Blink help explains the world within. Interesting, okay. Yeah. So you think it'd be good for me to read, uh, after I finish the tipping point? To, oh, yeah, no, to finish Blink. Blink. Yeah. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Sure. I think you'd like that one. I, I mean, I'm only, I'm probably about 100 pages into that book, and I was like... Okay. And yeah, it, how, how did you like it so far? I like it. I like okay. it. It's, uh... 
I'm reading, I, I, my style of reading is like very, I guess weird, I don't know, it, this is just how I like to read, but I'll, I'll read, um, uh, I'm probably reading, like right now, I'm probably reading like 15, 20 books, like something really? like that, yeah, but I just, like I'll get obsessed with this one, read it for a while, and then, I mean, there, there are books I've yeah. read, like that fall into that 20 category that I haven't touched in two months either. Okay. To where like I'll, so I've, that I've constantly like reading, that yeah. that, that's just, I don't know, that's what I found works best with me. That's cool, no, because I am totally the opposite. I read very like so I read two books at the same time mm -hmm. and that was like crazy for me but and it was also because one of them was the subtle art of not giving a fuck mm -hmm. and then the other one was the, it's it's a fantasy book about like Norse mythology mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Isles of the Blessed okay and it's the third book in the trilogy of the Sea of Trolls is the first one then the Land of Silver Apples is the second one and so it's like the final one and Jay lent me that one and you lent me the other one okay. and so I wanted to read them both and give them back to you absolutely because I got them both over Thanksgiving break and I wanted to get them back to you so I was like I'll read them both at the same time but then it was like I would read 10 pages of your book that's like much more conceptual I would like I would stop every couple sentences and think about something kind of like non-fiction versus yeah fiction. and then I would read my fiction book where I just like read 50 pages and then put it down and not touch it for two days mm -hmm. and so it was it, it worked because it was like two different styles of books absolutely but I don't think I could do I, I can't do like more than one book like I, right now two. for example I'm reading yeah. uh, I'm reading I, and that's probably why, now that I think about it, this is probably because I've always been really bad at remembering not not bad but I don't know I don't, I don't even say bad it's just difficult for me to remember or recall, like, okay, I got this bit of information from here. So, like, sometimes I'll say yeah. stuff, and I'm like, I know that's right, but I forgot where my source is. Like, yeah, like I, I'm like, I remember I read that in a book, but that's all I remember. I don't remember what the book was exactly. Like, I, yeah. I could probably narrow it down to, like, five, but I don't know exactly <laughs> which one I'm I talking about. I feel that, about. too, though. I, like, don't remember where a lot of the things I say are from. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Can't can't win them all. It's just yeah. It's it's the only reason I see that as a problem is like if any skeptics were to like okay like yeah. like okay that's really true like where are you saying that you got that from like like I'm doing my like I really don't think I, uh, I think sometimes recited that incorrectly. Say, like, I don't know though. For me at least, uh -huh. uh, sometimes I'm like I don't know. I know it's not my idea. That's all I can do. But then yeah. it, then it kind of in the uh, the eyes of that person if they're playing like devil's advocate and it's like it, it, I'm saying more in like a debate setting. Yeah. Okay. Then they're they're uh, it, it see the it, more skeptical of you. It makes their skeptical view look right and you look wrong. I'm like no, like I'm just presenting this information, yeah. but I forgot where I got it from. This is also me just like that's overthinking fair. the situation as well. Yeah. No, I mean that's fair though. To, you should know your source, I guess. I'm not good at that, but I also don't. I purposely try to avoid like debate settings because I don't. I don't like that like forced conflict. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's, how, it's how our world works. But like to me, it just seems silly to force a conflict when you can just have a discussion. Yeah, I would say this. I don't really have any. I, I very rarely have debates, and like even yeah, yeah, like it, it, like uh. Like, I don't, this podcast, I can't even think of one debate I've had. Like, I've had points where we disagree, but it's more of a discussion. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, and I think that's much healthier. Like, oh, absolutely. It's much more realistic, too. As I just realized that. Go. It's like, that's how conversations go in real life. No one's, like, yelling at someone for not knowing their source. Mm -hmm. At least, none of the people I hang out with. <laughs> Dude, you're, yeah, you're totally right. I'm, I'm totally <laughs> overthinking this. I'm, I'm thinking, like... <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, somebody like doesn't like me. I'm like, wait, why yeah. am I doing a podcast with them, and why am I hanging out with them? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If someone's that skeptical. I'm like, all right, cool, man. Do you know everything? Where you learned everything from? Um, like, no, get out of here. Like, I'm, all I know is I'm not making this shit up, and I'm doing my yeah. best to recite it as correctly yeah. as I possibly yeah, like, can. As long as you don't try to claim it as your original idea that you came up with all on your own, and mm -hmm. you're the best for coming up with it. Like, I think it's okay to just be willing to say I don't know but any opinion I hold yeah. I came up with and I'm smarter than you bitch <laughs> <laughs> get that uh, through your skull uh, yeah that is a very popular way of thinking in our culture I've, I've been in that that mindset because uh, I don't know I feel like the more curious you get the more you learn and it's, it's kind of like a rabbit hole kind of deal yeah and then you uh, I don't know I feel like you start to exceed some of like your, your peers and I'm there was like a point in time where I was like not cocky, but I was like, I, I, I was kind of pompous about what I knew. And I was yeah, like, it's I was hard. like, I'm smarter than the common man. And it's not, I don't even see like intellect as that. Like I don't define intelligence as like smarter. It's just like the way I see it is in comparison to the common man. It's like, 
okay, I've t- I put in more time to educate myself than the common person. I'm not necessarily smarter. I have a yeah. different brain than them. They have a different I've brain spent than me. More time learning and being open to new ideas mm-hmm. than most people. And maybe I've had different yeah. advantages that they didn't have. Maybe oh, for sure. See, like that. That's my thing. Like I have had all the advantages, and I'm still not a genius at all. I'm like I'm relatively smart, I guess, mm-hmm. but not. Not really, you know, whenever you compare me to people who are smart, I'm like, way down here. But it is hard to kind of keep yourself in check whenever you feel like you're doing well and you feel like you're learning and you feel like you've really come a long way and you're like, I'm way smarter now than I was. And it's hard to not let that rub off into other parts of your life where it's like, I'm way smarter than I was and you're not way smarter than you were, Mm -hmm. so I'm smarter than you. And like that's a dangerous way to think, but it's hard not to. It's it's hard to keep yourself it's humble. It's almost like what it, it. I mean, we could go on this on going off of this, like what defines a genius. But with that being said, it's yeah. like it's almost like it's, what defines. You're really like outliers. Really, it talks about Bill Gates uh-huh. and how like sure he's smart, but that's not why he's the billionaire he is. It's because he was curious about computers, and before everyone else had access to them. He had access to them, he put in the work, and he used them, and he messed up, and he didn't succeed, but then because of that, he learned how to write all these things, he learned how to code, he learned how to help, he learned how to fix. People were hitting him up, like big companies were like, we don't know how to do this, you know how to do this, help us. Uh-huh. And then he was just like, wait, I know more than the average person, I'm just going to make a company, Microsoft. Wow. And like, that's kind of the theme of Outliers, it's like, people aren't inherently smarter than other people. Well, I mean, not not that that's not true, but mm-hmm. it's, the theme is that people that are we perceive as super smart are that way because they put in work and they struggled with things. They melt, dealt with them in their head, thought about them, mm-hmm. worked really hard, and then whenever the opportunity arose, they were ready because they already had some sort of knowledge of this thing that other people didn't. Absolutely, and yeah. The, 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 the key thing that he puts out is, like, they're relentless. Like, they are relentless. Relentless. They just, relentlessly curious. Yeah, I guess. That's a good way to put it. And, like, they just, they took all the advantages that they had, and they took all the, like, you know, Bill Gates, his high school had, like, one of the first computer clubs his freshman year. But then he ran with it. That was lucky, but then he ran with it. He put in the work. He lived next to... Uh, oh, like give me goosebumps. He, like, he, just thinking about that, like, how much that one little fucking yeah. computer like, club, like, next to altered the, the course of Washington. history. He lived next to the University of Washington, uh-huh. and they had a computer terminal, and it was open all night. And he would just walk there from his house and just code all night. That's crazy. And so, like, you know, he took advantage of things that he had, and he made the best of a situation that was really good, but, like, he put in the work. He busted his butt... And he got to where he is because he was really curious about this thing that became huge. The, I don't know why, but shit like that makes me tear like very, very mildly. Yeah. Like, like that made me like kind of tear up. Like it's how cool, cool that is, like, right? No, because it, it's to me, it's a story of you don't have to be the prodigy, you don't have to be a genius, you just have to be willing to find something you love and work really hard at figuring it out. I like that. Relentless, relentless. It's, I was talking to one of the professors and in my like department, and one of the things she said to me, she's like, the best scientists are the ones who can like be wrong a ton, but just be persistent and not give up and just keep coming back. Mm. And just, you get tired of it, but then you wake up the next day and you're like, all right, I'm going to just keep going. I think, I think people really like this, uh, this narrative or this archetype of this... Uh... That gets painted very commonly. You got there and you didn't try or something? Almost like, in a sense, yes. Like, obviously, hard work, persistence, all that's relevant. But almost like they, yes, they work somewhat hard, but not only somewhat. Like, they, Mm. I I just think it's a very, almost, um, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a very fitting narrative to, to sell the common man that this person just had this gift yeah you know yeah. like like it's lebron james just think. has this gift yeah. and like yeah like yeah he's he's a somewhat hard worker but he has a gift and it like yeah they might have a gift but you have to you cannot discredit the amount of work they put in to mm-hmm. get there you cannot I, discredit i that. think it has to do with just the way things are presented now like you know you'll watch uh, a, a game 
on TV of LeBron James playing basketball, and you see the fruits of his labor, you see how good he is, but what you're not seeing in, on TV are the thousands of hours he spends in the gym. You're not seeing the thousands of hours he spends working out. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing the work that goes into building that. And that's part of the problem that a lot of people have is they don't see the hard work other people do. They see someone flip a bottle. They see someone flip five bottles. Well, what they didn't see is that kid sat there for 20 hours flipping bottles, getting good at it, mm -hmm. and now he's good at it. And it's that process that really makes you better. Relentless persistence. Yeah. Relentless curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. It's really important, and it's really hard. I mean, I've, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm just as guilty as anybody oh, yeah. else. Like, I've, I've totally right. bought it, and I, I totally like to buy into the idea it of this nice. person having this, like, Gives us intuitive genius or this innate genius to, like, Lionel Messi picking up a soccer ball. Or Kanye West, like, going in the studio. But it's... Well, it gives an excuse for me that, like, so, you know, when Kanye made a big say, I, I actually don't know this, so, say he's, like, 22, well, I'm 23 now, he made it big because he just had a gift. And I haven't made it big because I don't have that gift. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, a way of reassuring ourselves that we're not bad, they're just really good. Yeah, And I yeah. think that's dangerous to, like, compare yourself to anyone. Like that, because they had a completely different life than you. They have a completely different life than you. You can't just say, "Well, they're 22, I'm 23, I'm a failure because they're doing better than me." Yeah. It's like, well, think about this. In 20 years, how are they going to be doing? Are they still going to be better than you? Maybe, maybe not. Like, you've just got to compare yourself to your past self. And if you're doing better than you were, you're on a good path. That's that's the only thing we have is comparing ourselves to what we were. Not to everyone else. Because you'll never win if you compare yourself to everyone else. Like, literally, you can be making $50 million a year, but there's people making a billion dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm not good enough. I'm not even close to those people. I'm not satisfied. But, but you are good. You're doing great from my perspective. Mm -hmm. It's all about your perspective. And if you compare yourself to other people, you're always, if, if your bar is always going up, it's going to be really tough to find success in your life. But if your goal is to be better than I was you have a lot higher chance of being happy. And then you also have that, you don't stunt that progress. You're yeah, not getting you, complacent. Yeah, you're not like downplaying your progress. You're like, wow, I'm actually doing good versus someone who got a raise and is now making $10 million, but they're like, I want to make 50. Ah! And, and Compare what, yourself to who you were yesterday, not who somebody is now. Yeah. yeah. In a way. I, I like uh, 21 Savage, who I didn't really know much about him. I didn't really know much of his music. Mm -hmm. His new album is called I Am Better Than I Was. And I really like it. It's a really good album. Like, If you're listening to this, you should go listen to it. It's got some good features. So if you, if you don't know much about 21 Savage, uh, listen to like, there's a song with Post Malone, one mm -hmm. with J. Cole, and one with Childish Gambino. I like so, all three of them? Yeah, see, so that's how, that's how I got in. And then I just listened to the album on repeat twice. And I think I only skipped like two songs. Mm. Like it was, it's, it's good. Wow. 21 Savage is real. Wow. He's, he's down to earth. He's cool. Interesting. I would have guessed the exact opposite. Right? No, no. no. My, I think my least favorite like popular artist right now is Travis Scott because I think he... Really? Yeah, right. Everyone loves him. Yeah, everybody loves when him. When I listen to his music... I really haven't met like anybody when, who doesn't like Travis Scott. When I listen Scott. to his music, like I just feel like he's the definition of like an industry show. Everything he talks about is like money and balling out and going to the club. I like that opinion because I, I think he makes good, catchy music. Oh, but he makes very catchy music. Not conceptual. He's riding the trend. Not, yes. He's riding yes. the trend. His sound, yeah, his, yeah. his sound is very right. catchy. But everyone forgets that like, Straight up. that like three, five years ago, everybody was calling Travis Scott out for like copying people's sound. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Nobody remembers it now because he's up. popular. But like... Everyone used to call him out for copying, and now they're like, "Oh no, he's the voice of a generation." <laughs> I, I'm not. Okay, big, I'm not big into music. He's the voice of our generation. <laughs> see, no, but I'm not that big into music, and like people talk. I, I, I tweeted that one day just to see what would happen. Nobody like usually responds to my tweets, but people random ass people like nobody cares about your opinion. Nobody <laughs> asked for your hot take. Like shut the fuck up. I didn't know opinions could be wrong until now. It's <laughs> like okay, fine. Like that's cool. You can. You can think that. It's I didn't something. know opinions could be wrong until now. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that was actually one of my friends, and I mean, he was like kind of joking, but uh -huh. like, he likes he likes Travis Scott. Okay, absolutely. 
and like kind of giving you shit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like he wasn't being a dick, but it was funny. And I, I like having friends that will like call me out if they think I'm wrong. I don't, I don't want to have friends yeah, have just friends. say like, yeah, you're right. And then the back of the head, like, fuck this guy. Like, just tell me how you feel. If you don't like me, that's fine. But that's like, how, that's a, tell me that's how a very important thing I'm looking for in a girl. Is somebody who's willing to disagree with me. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I've, I've, yeah, you've got to have someone who will call you out on your bullshit. Yes. Like, you're going to be with them forever. Like, well, even if you if you think this way and they think this way and they're unwilling to, like, challenge you or, like, yeah, confront you with that opinion... I don't know. I just have I, I've met a lot of girls who just kind of like acquiesce, like just over, like yeah. agree without. Well, because they don't want to be confrontational. Nobody really wants to be confrontational. It's not confrontational to disagree, though. That's a, that's something Joe Rogan, by example, that's, has taught me. Yeah, it's not a bad thing to disagree that's what with somebody. People associate it with them. Absolutely, and I did my entire life with uh, confrontation, and they think that to disagree, they have to like call them out, or they have to like say you're wrong. But, like, the truth is you can just say I disagree with you. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. Yeah. And I I don't think a lot of people would agree with us on that. It's probably because, like we were saying earlier, it's like people don't view it objectively. They view it, like, subjectively. Well, it's like, like, really? Really? Why do you disagree with me? Travis Scott is my personal hero. Yeah. And so he said that he doesn't like Travis Scott. So he obviously is a terrible human being. He empowers me through my workouts, my road trips. Yeah. Uh, he I'm gets like, me from fine. point A to I, I point B happier. People like Travis Scott, they should continue to like him and ignore me. Totally fine. I will not feel bad about it at all. I get shit about it almost every day from my friends. You but can't listen say to things. your point of view. <laughs> yeah, That's but like, all we're saying. Just, just next time you listen to Travis Scott, think about, huh, maybe he is just talking about stupid bullshit. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong and maybe I need to go through and listen. Because mm-hmm. I've only listened to Astral World like once or twice. But I couldn't. I skipped like every song. Mm-hmm. Besides Sicko Mode, sure, okay, yeah. I like that song. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Skrillex remix is better too. Oh really? The Skrillex remix is dope. Yeah. My friend, I, my friend Kyle showed me that one. It's yeah, like, it's, and I I really like whenever I have these opinions about artists. So like, let's say like you with Travis Scott for example, and then there's somebody like me who comes along. And say I'm a huge Travis Scott guy. I'm like, I'm just yeah. like, and I come along. I'm like, dude, actually Travis Scott's really awesome for this reason. Like for example, I thought. I thought Kanye West was kind of like, I don't know. I was focusing more on like the negative sides of yeah, him. Like, I had a friend come into my life and he's like, no dude, like Kanye's sick. And I, I didn't have like strong opinions, but like, I was like, Kanye's I was like, I like his music, but he's kind of like a fucking dropout. crazy, but uh, he, he made me fall in love with uh, Kanye as a person. One like, thing, one thing, uh, not that many people notice all of his beats revolve around one thing. What's that? It's because he believes that the human voice is the best instrument on the planet. Mm. And so almost all of his beats have an element of the human oh. voice. The, That's the, a good the, point. The main bass line, that. whatever it is, like it's the human voice is heavily, prominently featured. Gloria! <laughs> yeah, like, Step up in this bitch like even if it's Gloria! Even if it's weird, like it's fun. It's fun. Like I don't know. I Oh, uh-huh, honey. Yeah. I, I think Kanye needs help, honestly. I think he's going through some serious problems and just needs to shut up. But he's not uh-huh. listening to anyone. He's just... I don't know what I think about him. I, I like his music. I still. bet Joe Rogan had some on. There's a lot of hype around that. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fun. Because I, I honestly still like Kanye's music. And I, I think a lot of the things that he says, he's just trying to like stir the pot and just get people talking about him still. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. He's irrefutably a genius in getting attention drawn to himself he's a genius yeah. marketer whether or not it's intentional though, shit. I don't yeah know. there's a communication theory i forgot what the communication theory is called but it pretty much rests in like the, the central point is that you say something that's going to break the social barrier uh not necessarily the, the social barrier but the social norm of what is acceptable and what's unacceptable you say that, and then you're going to draw people towards you, but simultaneously, you're also going to have a group of people that are drawn away from you. Hmm. And I think that kind of applies. It's it's kind of an art, like, once you, like, understand the theory more. So, yeah. So, they're, like, appropriate, like, timing's big, like, appropriate times to say stuff. Uh, like, I mean, if you're at a funeral and you make something, yeah, like, some yeah, yeah, insensitive <laughs> joke about the person dying, like, that's probably going to get a negative reaction. But if you're, if you're at, um, I don't know, maybe, like, a... a Trump rally or something, and maybe it hits a silent point, and you just fart, and then maybe maybe that's a, a hypothetically <laughs> speaking, maybe like everybody around you thinks it's the funniest thing ever. So like, yeah. it's it, you gotta you gotta know when to do it and when not to. But I think that theory applies to Kanye West like very relevantly. 
Yeah, I could see that. Uh, uh, I always think of this one Reddit like theory. It's like if you want to know the answer to something, post the wrong answer and then someone will correct you immediately. It's like people will be faster to respond with the correct answer if you post like, this is the right answer. They'll be like, no, you're not. You're wrong. You're dumb. Versus if you ask, mm -hmm. people won't give you the answer as fast. Yeah, that's a good point. That's an that's a interesting point people, of like human nature. Like, yeah, it's weird. People will like to correct you but not help you out. <laughs> that's kind of what that says, right? <laughs> I know. It's weird. Hey, bitch, you're wrong. Yeah, I'm yeah. just yelling from up here in Canada that you are wrong. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I want to rub it in your face. Uh, it's weird. That's funny. It's kind of similar. Yeah. Humans are strange. I'm going to selfishly bring the conversation back to uh, lucid dreaming just because okay. oh, I yeah. heard something really oh, yeah. interesting about this the other day. What'd you hear? Okay, so... I might butcher the statistics and like the specifics, okay. but the general idea I'll get correct. And it's pretty cool. Um, so pretty much there is some, I guess you'd say breakthrough medication uh, as far as lucid dreaming goes. It's called galantamine. It's a, oh, what's the, um, not antidepressant. It's a, uh, like a sleep it's, oh, it's an Alzheimer's. It's it's used typically or originally. Its original okay. intended purpose was to treat Alzheimer's, hmm. but they've used it to successfully, more successfully so than the placebo, uh, treat people uh, or teach people how to lucid dream. So the the case study was that hmm. they had 121 people try this medication, galantamine, um, and. So they, they taught both both like uh, I guess what, what would you even call it like, like control like the control group and the experimental group yeah they taught both of them how to lucid dream like the the same exact methods okay and they 121 people took the galantamine about 50 percent of them were able to successfully lucid dream which is absolutely insanity that's that's really cool. Okay. In comparison to the placebo, I don't know how many people exactly took the glantum or uh, took the placebo, but only fourteen percent of the placebo successfully was lucid dreamed. Wow, which that's that's crazy. That's crazy. Thirty six percent difference. Yeah, that's absolutely insane. That's really significant. And like, what what are we going to learn about human consciousness with having a better understanding of our dreams? Do, do we know what like lucid dreaming like? I personally don't know. Yeah. Like, I, I guess you could it's you could know more like knowing like the interpretation of dreams because I've heard dreams aren't necessarily like it's a lot interpreted of correctly. There's a lot of theories about dreams. Uh huh. I just got a book by Sigmund Freud called Interpretation of Dreams. Really? But it, like, I guess you could interpret it different ways. But what I've heard is that dreams are always irrefutably honest. Like they're always yeah, very it's... honest. There's some theories that it's like your subconscious's way of trying to get ideas to your conscious brain. But like, why would there be nonsense dreams then? Would they all have a meaning? And I don't know about that because I've had some weird dreams where I'm just like, what the hell? And maybe I'm missing it. Maybe people are reading too much into it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Dreams are weird. And why are they so sporadic too? At least my recollection yeah, of dreams. And some are just so vivid. And most are just fleeting. You kind of remember a couple of details and then it's gone. Well, what's what defines vivid? Like how like, the trauma you that's feel there like for you're really there. Like, well, uh -huh. I, for me at least, I have dreams where like I typically just like remember patches of a dream, and then sometimes like I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh, I want to go back to the dream world. I'll go back to sleep and I'll go back into my dream and I'm like mm -hmm. vividly there, that. and I'm just like checking it out and it's crazy. Yeah, and like it's all in my brain. Like my brain is created basically. Uh, another reality inside of itself for me to explore. That's wild. Yeah, yeah it and it, it changes every night weird. too. It's not like this consistent yeah, reality yeah. that you're constantly and going to. Some people have like reoccurring dreams where it's like years, like between dreams. Yeah, that that that's crazy to me. So it's like in theory, it's like stored in your subconscious somewhere, just somehow sitting around there, There's some chilling. chemical or electronic signal. That's I mean, that's all our brains are: chemicals and electronic signals. Mm -hmm. And like, yet all that information's in there somehow. Mm. One of the one of the things that Malcolm Gladwell talks about in Blink is like that a lot of these people, how you know they can 
as he calls it, thin slice, mm -hmm. and like they can figure things out quickly after a lot of experience, they don't know how they're doing it. Like they don't know how their brain tells them this is going to happen. They don't know how the brain says that's fake, that's real, but that they know it's the case. They just don't know why. They don't know how. The brain does all the math for them and then just says, gives them the reaction. Like he talks about one art critic and the art guy's like, you know, how, whenever I see a piece of art, I really focus on the first word that comes into my brain. And with this, you know, it was like an ancient Greek, I think it was a koro. I don't know, I probably said it wrong, but anyway. And the first word that came into his mind was fresh. And he's like, fresh should not be the first word that comes into my mind. When I'm ancient. seeing thousands of years old piece of, you know, engraving or, or uh, I mean, a statue. Yeah. Fresh. Right? And so, like... Why did that word come to his mind? He has no idea, but it did. And he was right. That thing was fake. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, how did he know that? He doesn't know. We don't know. No one knows. So that's, but is that knows. how he interpreted the word, though? He was willing to say it was, like, fresh, and it's like, this is fake? Like he Yeah. Oh, like, like, these people, literally, the second they saw it, were like, someone, someone, uh, they showed, like, we paid a lot of money for this. They, you know, dropped the curtain, and she just blurts out, I'm so sorry. She didn't know why. She literally is like, I don't know why I said that, but that's fake. I, I'm so sorry. You paid a lot of money for it. Yeah. And then, like, they had the, the museum that had this piece had it for 14 months. And they, like, ran scientific analysis on the, the rock. They took a little chunk out of his knee and, uh -huh. like, ran it and analyzed it. And they were like, there's, you know, this rock has aged for thousands of years. And they, like, had the paperwork checked and all this stuff. And it, how did they prove it was fake, months. though? Uh, there's a lot of little things kept popping up. Like, one, it shouldn't be that fresh. Like, it shouldn't look that nice. Like, all the other ones from that period... More deteriorated. Looked, yeah, uh, another thing was, like... Especially uh, Hitler was done with them. One of, the, one of the papers that came with it, it had a zip code that didn't exist until, like, 20 years after it said that it came from that zip code. Um, there was, uh, like, the... Whatever style it was in, the size was wrong. The guy was too big, and a lot of little things, and like just too many little things that yeah. added up. And yeah, it's super weird. Which makes sense because they, they, I feel like if you're gonna fake that, like I, I don't know, yeah. I've never attempted to fake right, it. I don't know anything about <laughs> sculpture, yeah. <laughs> but I, I feel like the material is one thing I would definitely get right. Yeah, you know? right. Like, that's that's it's like okay, that, yeah. But then like the little things, like the size of the person from this area, or like whatever it was that they were able to get. Dude, yeah, that's what we got to get into, making some fake sculptures. Did you ever watch the show White Collar? Nah. Oh, uh, that's, that's the only experience I have with art fakes. Uh, the guy's name is Neil Caffrey. He's uh -huh. like, he was a criminal. He was a, like, serial art thief. He would steal art pieces and replace them with near-identical fakes. And, like, he would sell the originals for, you know, millions. And then he got caught. And then basically the FBI is giving him a deal where if he works with them to find other art thieves, they'll let him go after 10 years. Or uh -huh. And yeah, it's a cool show. Wow. It's a really wow. cool show. I like it a lot. It's kind of corny, but like every TV show is a little corny. <laughs> white collar is like the more high class. Yeah, white collar. Versus... Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's absolutely. like a high class crime. Blue collar is like middle class. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I know nothing of white collar, but the show is awesome. Okay. <laughs> Blue collar is fucked watching white collar shit go down. <laughs> yeah. Cussing sick. <laughs> uh, only because you can't do it though. True. Like South Park, have you seen the episode where they basically say shit like they have a counter in the corner and it's like a hundred times or whatever. I think I've heard about it. I've yeah. never seen it though. Well basically the, the like thesis of the episode is like cussing means something because you're only allowed to do it so much like it's unacceptable if you do it too much like if you're someone who just swears a lot you're like oh that person's like weird like, that's a good point and like if you say fuck a lot then whenever you say fuck people don't pay attention it like, loses its yeah like because the, the reason you say that is like i want to bring emphasis to this thing like this is fucking bad and you're like whoa he said the f word wow but, it like, must be bad if that guy says fuck every day all the time and then he says it's fucking bad. You're like, oh, it's just bad, whatever. Right. That's why my grandparents, they're very, uh, like, binary with cussing. They're like, they, mm -hmm. they, they just think it's all wrong, all wrong. And I was like, no, I disagree with you. Like, I, yeah. excuse me. Uh, like, they, they told me, they're like, I like your podcast, but sometimes you cuss a little too much. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't think I cuss too much. I think 
how I like to use cuss words is to add emphasis, and that's that's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. I thought, I thought it was interesting. My my roommate Kyle, who's a film major, was telling me about how they do like PG thirteen versus R ratings, and in PG thirteen movies, you're like allowed like one big cuss word, but you can't use like fuck. You can't use it in a sexual way. Oh, uh, so so like you can say it once in a tasteful way, but that's it. And then the movie can still be PG thirteen. Like, look at your fucking hat. Yeah, like, so, but, but like, the, the hat, it has to be at like a critical point in the movie or something, and like, it's it's very very, um, oh, what's the word? It's like subjective. No, uh-huh. but you can I've never use thought it that. once, and you know you have to like you can only do so much gore, you can almost do like so much of this, and like so it's all intentional. Whenever there is cussing, whenever there is gore, it's intentional to bring the drama and emphasis to that point, to that thing. Like this is bad, or this is crazy, or like whoa, what just happened? That's really interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, because I, I do I do agree with that logic. Like I mean, you, you hear somebody that cusses like. Every other word they're saying, it's like it. Like I, I do agree with people just saying that they're, up. yeah, like they're, they're. I don't know, like yeah, they come off as uneducated. Honestly, like also, that's kind yeah. of like your interpretation. But like somebody who, um, who uses it in moderation, it's like it, it brings attention and yeah, raises like, oh, eyebrows. Wow, okay. Yeah, exactly. It raises eyebrows. That's a good. That's a good term. I like that. Because it's true that people look like, holy shit, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's like he just cussed. The quiet guy just cussed. Yeah. Uh, Shit's getting real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, cussing, not using words, makes the meaning more impactful. Just like we were talking earlier, moderation. Yeah, no, my moderation is uh, very important to me. But then there's rappers who say things like moderation is for cowards. I don't, I don't know. But for his life, so that's Will probably Smith is true. Too. He's like, you, you project extremes, and you get extreme results. Yeah. Like project extremes into the universe, you get extreme results as well. So yeah, you know, I'm a very extreme person. I will say that. But like going on the video games thing, like I, yeah. I, know, I would get obsessed with the video game for like three, four days, play like a shit ton, and yeah. then I just like don't touch it for months. Huh. That was always my like how yeah. I play video. No, games. there's a, I know a lot of people like that. I feel like I've always just been very moderate, like very kind of in the middle. And like I'll read like ten pages of a book a day and just get through it in a month. You know what's good, though, is whenever you have the passion driving something to where you like it enough to where you're extreme with it, but frequently. Yeah. That's cool. It's tough, though. Passion is exhausting. Passion is exhausting. And, like, I don't know. It's it's weird because eventually passion will run out. Why do you think that? Your views will change. Everything changes. Why would my views not? So, like, if I really feel powerful about this way... But then I learned some new information that makes me feel less powerful. If all that was driving me was my passion, and I've seen things in a new light, and now I'm less passionate, then I'm just going to be miserable. Because I'm like, whoa, was my passion misplaced? Like, mm. what am I doing here? Why am I here? Was it just passion? Or like, I've, so for me, like, but would I that like be have... defined as passion though? What do you mean? Like, would you would you actually define that experience as? being defined as passion. Well, like, for example, right now I'm pretty passionate about hiking. Like, I really like it. I think it's important for me. Mm-hmm. But say I experience something else that makes me feel more passionate about it in mm-hmm. my free time. And so I spend less time hiking and I feel less passionate about it. I'm not hiking as much, but I'm still, I guess, following passion. I don't know. But do, do you have to feel that way? Like, so, like, say... Say you're passionate about hiking and you find something that you like just a little bit more mm-hmm. and it's new to you so maybe it's got that fresh appeal as well and you start – so like let's say you're, you're capped off right here with with hiking. Like your enjoyment yeah. levels right here but then you like something just a little bit more. It's fresh so so you, you develop a proclivity to prefer that whenever you're faced with like the free time of like what do I want to do and you do that more. And maybe the short run, but does that necessarily mean you have less passion for hiking or? But I guess that comes back to like, why was I hiking? Was I just hiking because I was passionate about it? Or did it also have other benefits? And for me, like hiking, it's a good way to get healthy. It's a good way to get outside. It's a good way to be with myself. It's a good way to go see cool things in nature. And like, and also for me, like my work is with natural ecosystems. I work Mm. with streams. And so whenever I go hiking, I also... Can I've had small insights and had new ideas for things at work, and so like, there's, I guess passion is weird. I don't know how to define it. 
Because I, I would disagree with you on that, to be honest. Because I, I feel like, like with soccer, like I, I enjoy it, but I'll find other things and then I'll start yeah. pursuing those other things instead of soccer. But I still Come back to always it. keep it on the side. It's always like a almost a filler in a way. Is that what passion is, though? What do you mean? Like, what is passion? Like, what? What? Are, like, sure, you keep coming back to soccer. Is that because uh, you're passionate about it, or is it because that's what you're familiar with? That's what you know. I would say definitely all three. I would say consist. It's been something consistent. It's been something consistent that I've loved. And uh, to be honest, my, my love for it has grown even more as like time's gone, which is kind of a weird concept to ponder too. But um, but it's it's always something. Not always, but. For the next few years and in the past, it's always been something for uh, that I can always go back to. Yeah. But if I find other hobbies, then I can uh, go pursue those. And I might even like those other hobbies like less than I like soccer. But mm -hmm. since they're so new and maybe I'm bad at them and I want to get like better at them, then I pursue those. But my love for soccer like kind of uh, plateaus. Like I, yeah. it doesn't take yeah. away from my love for soccer. I would say. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's so it's so weird to me, like what people find interesting and what people like go back to. I guess because mm -hmm. it's totally different for everyone. Totally different. Like I was wondering, it's like, is do some people just have a predisposition to like this certain thing? Yeah, or... right. I have no idea. Because like, I mean, for example, with soccer again. Like the only yeah. reason I like soccer as much as I do, like I didn't even like it that much when I first started. Like my yeah. mom just forced me to play it. To be honest with you, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then like I remember there was a pivotal moment in my soccer career back in seventh grade where I was like, okay, I'm going to get good at this. And I just started training like all the time. Yeah. That's cool. So it probably stopped being something you had to do and started being something you'd like to do. Whenever I quit college soccer, yes. Yeah. Like I always tell people like me, me playing soccer now versus me, my senior year of high school, like in theory, like I was in better shape back then. Right. Mm -hmm. But Oh, I would fuck me up. Like right now, oh, I would destroy my old self. Like I would, yeah. for sure. Like a hundred. Like I'm a lot more skilled than I was in high school. Just That's cool because just practicing on my own. And anytime I, yeah. anytime I play now, it's because I want to be there. Like I 100% want to yeah. be there. Yeah, yeah. Versus, uh, I don't know. I've experienced a lot of like going throughout high school. Like I was just constantly forced to do this thing, and then college, yeah. same deal with the one season I played. It was just constantly being forced to wake up at 6 a.m. and go play the sport. Yeah. That's, and uh, that's, that's a lot. The, the psychology behind it, I just perform better now. I yeah. perform a lot better. And so, well, so you had to wake up at six a.m. But like, and you didn't like. You, do you think your passion faded at all because of that? Because like you had to do it. It was no longer something you wanted to do. Absolutely. Like I started to hate the sport, and yeah. I, I I knew I didn't hate the sport. I just hated the experience of that sport. Okay. So and the then, experience that you were having like at that time because you were. Like doing something you didn't want to do. You were waking up every day at 6 a.m. Like, I want to play soccer, but I want to play soccer on my terms. That's how yeah, I feel. Yeah. No, I, That's I, how I feel about anything, I honestly. I feel very similar. Same. It's, it's nice to do things on your own terms. Like right now, for example, if you told me, if, if I don't feel like going to play, maybe I feel like just like kind of chilling playing video games tonight or playing ping yeah. pong, like doing something more chill, relaxed. Yeah. That's just the mood I'm, um, that's more fitting for how I feel right now. And you're like, let's go play soccer. Be like, no. Like, I, I don't feel like yeah. playing in this moment, but I'm still... I still, I still love the sport. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> just not fitting for the day. Yeah. No, it's it's super weird because I'm I'm very similar like that. Like sometimes I don't want to go hiking, but it's not that I don't like hiking. It's like oh, it's raining outside. I went yesterday and like I'm just not feeling it. But so that that kind of comes back to my point that like passion will fade and like that's why I don't want to just decide my life based on my passions mm. because like. If I have to wake up at 6 a.m. every day to do it, will I still like it? Will Good I point. still be passionate about it? Or will I, was I just passionate because I got to do what I wanted? That's a good point, too. It's like, am, yeah. I, am I actually passionate about it right. if, like, when I have to do it, I don't want to do it? Yeah, it's weird. My, Mike Rowe is actually the first one who ever made me think, like, maybe don't do what you're passionate about. What, what's his, uh, his counterintuitive advice so remember, to that? Remember Dirty Jobs, the show? Mm -hmm. He's the guy who did that. Absolutely. And kind of his point of doing that show was to show people, like, you can make a bunch of money doing shit that no one wants to do, like shoveling roadkill off the side of the road. One of his, his comment that I always sticks in my brain is that roadkill cleanup crews whistle while they work. It's like they make $80,000 a year cleaning up roadkill. Mm -hmm. That's a good amount of money. It's not bad. Maybe you don't enjoy what you do, but you get to go home and have a nice 
house. You get to have things you want. You get to be comfortable. You get to like have a safe place. And if that's what you want, that's a great way to get it. My thing is that's not what I want. I don't want to be comfortable. I, I think our culture way overvalues comfort. Because on the PCT, I was very rarely comfortable. For six months, I was uncomfortable. Especially like... The things hurt. My knees hurt. My feet hurt. I was cold. I was tired. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I didn't have water. My filter got lost. Whatever it was, but I was fine. And no, and no matter what, I was always fine. And I was happy because I was outside doing like whatever I wanted. Absolutely. And, and so to me, it's more about the freedom to do what I want than it is to follow a passion or whatever. I don't know. And that's weird to me because... What I do, I, I, I like science. I, I do. I really like science. And I like learning about aquatic ecosystems. And mm -hmm. I really am passionate about that. But I, I like my job now because I kind of get to dictate my schedule. I'm a research technician, so I work in the lab on Monday. Mm -hmm. Maybe Tuesday I go to the field. And then Wednesday I try to work up what I did while I was in the field, make it look like data, make it mean something, make a graph out of it. And then I'll go pipette some samples to get run the next day. And then I'll run the samples the next day. And then I'll take the samples and figure out which ones need to be rerun and rerun those. And so it's just a process that I get to completely create for myself. And I think that's why I like it. And that's kind of why I want to do a master's in that field is because I get to create a project. I get to create my own question and then I get to go do it. And I think it's really cool to be able to do my own thing. Mm. And like that freedom is really cool. So the freedom is what you're chasing. More I think so that's than what I'm chasing. I think so too. But yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I I kind of like broke down like my motivation, I guess you'd say. With mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, because I was always in like YouTube videos and vines and all this. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, why am I? Why am I so into this? And I think I think a big part is I think it'd be really cool to be able to do something I enjoy. Like, and you could you. It's separate from the passion yeah, yeah, aspect. Yeah, it's something that the day to day you enjoy. Absolutely, think, and that's constantly changing, like you were saying. Yeah, and just that freedom. That so freedom like, is ultimately what I want. With vines and with YouTube videos, you enjoyed setting up the camera, coming up with an idea, and then making that idea happen. Yeah, I that, enjoy the creative did. process. You know, like whenever, you know, you make a YouTube video, that's not what you're actually doing. What you're doing is sitting down and coming up with an idea. And then you're taking that idea and you're figuring out the best way to say it. Your, your tone, your inflection, the speed you say it, like whatever, the pacing, like the shot of the camera, which angle to use, and then who's going to be in it with me, what's going to happen, where is it going to be in my bedroom, in my living room, mm. all those decisions, all that creative, like that's what you enjoy. Right? Yeah, and yeah. I, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of my friends, don't understand that once you get to the workforce, you're not going to be a business associate. You're not going to, you're going to be doing certain things during your day. And some jobs you do the same thing every day. And some jobs you get to choose what you do. Your day to day is the important part. It's not the title. It's not what you feel like you're doing big, big long term. It's really about what you do day to day to day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Are you managing people? Do you like managing people? Are you creating? Do you like creating? Like all those things. That's what really matters in a job. Absolutely. And I think that's lost in the school process because no one enjoys going to school. No one enjoys the like going to class and studying and learning and like people don't enjoy that today. That's weird to me because personally I, I, I like learning. I, I like so most of my classes, I enjoyed towards the end. Now, my first classes, my freshman, sophomore year, not so much because it was things I didn't give a shit about. Uh -huh. I didn't care. But then once I, I got into that. once I got into my like classes that I care about, like I had an eight a.m. for your major that I maybe missed like once or twice because uh -huh. I was just like, I want to go to class today. I want to learn about this thing. I want to get better at this thing. Absolutely, that will help me to you know do whatever. And that's like the ideal. That's what yeah. like I. I I wish I had more of that in my own life, to be honest. And I, also, I think a lot of people would wish they had more of that yeah. as well. Instead of dreading this task of going to learn yeah, something. Right? Like I, I, I signed up willingly. Uh -huh. I had to pay for... I'm taking a class at 8 a.m. Tuesday and Thursday for the next semester while I'm working. Like, for some 8, 8 to 9, 15, Just Tuesday because? Thursday. Yeah, it's stream ecology. And, like, I don't know... I know a lot about streams. Are you going like, to do the homework? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. I'm in the class. Like, I'm gonna, enrolled as a post-baccalaureate, non-degree-seeking graduate student. 
Interesting. Okay. And so, like, my 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 dad is paying for it. Actually, he he told me he'd be willing to pay for classes. Really? I was like, if you want to learn and want to take the class. Uh huh. And so I'm taking. That's really class. interesting. I've never heard of anybody doing that. Yeah, and like to me, it makes sense though. Like, I need to know more about this thing to be have have more skills to mm. improve to show people like this is what I want to do and like it is. That's really cool. It's That's really, really cool. And it's really fascinating to me too because in my my fields. There, there are like there are textbooks, but to me they don't make as much sense as going to class because like the textbook so presents it in such a weird it. way, and like I learn best. Well, okay, first of all, so I am terrible at online classes. Mm -hmm. Took two at Mizzou, failed both of them. They're so self I failed them, I failed them uh -huh. because I didn't have a connection. I learn from people. That's what I found. I learn really well from people. Mm -hmm. like, if I have a conversation with someone. I will think about what they told me because I value them as a person. And I'm like, they have had a lot of experiences in their life. They have learned a lot of things through experience. I want to tap into that experience by learning from them. And so like with my professor, I have a personal experience. And so I want to learn from her. And like sh what she has to say means a lot. And so whenever I go home to do my homework, I'm like, I want to show her that I paid attention to what she said. So I do my homework and then figure out the things I don't know. So it's very personal. So proving to that person that you understand what they're saying is like a motivating force to you? Yeah. Really? Which is weird, right? I know. I'm very weird. But that's interesting. Fine, that's that's cool. I mean, whatever, yeah. whatever gets See, the job yeah, done, exactly. whatever works. Yeah. And that's why, for me, it's really hard whenever I have teachers I don't like. Like, I do very poorly in those classes. Really? If a teacher, like, doesn't level with the students and when the teacher's just like, oh, just this is how it is because this is what I said and blah, blah, blah. I've never heard that psychology oh, before. That's really, really interesting, yeah. yeah. Well, I, you're even, essentially even if I to a stranger. Like class, almost, like, it's cool. Yeah, it's no, cool. Like, my, I had a dendrology class, which is mm -hmm. like study of trees. I'm not a big tree nerd. Like, I, I like trees. They're cool. I like to look at them, maybe climb them. Uh -huh. like, I don't want to learn the Latin name. I don't want to learn, like, where on the hill it grows because of the water. And, like, I just... Not my thing. Yeah, because that was the Latin but, name benefit you at all. <laughs> but like, but I had a professor who I really liked. Like when I walked into the class, he'd be like, "Hey, this guy's here." And like he was a funny dude. He actually wasn't really like a teacher. He was a researcher on like chestnuts, I think. I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, and he was just kind of told to teach the class because the, they were in between teachers. Uh -huh. But he was just a really down to earth guy who was like, "All right, this is how it is. This is how the class is going to be. This is what you need to know. We're going to go around and do this every day." And I'm gonna show you trees. And I was just like, you're cool. I wanna, like. I thought I saw that camera dying. I was like. Oh, is it dying? Yeah, it, yeah, it always does. I kept, I kept seeing it on the side <laughs> of my eye, and I was like, am I crazy? And then it looked it's over and actually did. Yeah. Oh, no, it's like, it, it's, uh, my dad has a very similar camera to that, and I wanna trade him because, like, yeah. he doesn't have the external battery, so I could charge it while we're going, and it uh, would last as nice. long as the SD card lasts. Yeah, okay. But yeah, I don't have that luxury. It's the, it's the small details that get it worked out. Joe. <laughs> that's, that's the cool thing, though. We're in this point in our lives where, like, we're young and we're allowed to make mistakes and, like, do things wrong. Plus, I want, I want like, as far as, like, the uh, appeal and the look of this podcast, I want there to be a very clear difference on the first video versus the last. What do you mean? Like, like uh, oh, as like far as quality. Improvement of, like, this is where I started. And this is where I'm at now, 10 years later. With oh, myself, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's not, but like also with the production quality as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. With that, both. It's like, wow, this guy started with shit. Yeah. yeah, true. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, this guy, this guy, like, he was, he didn't know what he was fucking doing at all in the beginning. Like, yeah. He said, like, now, a little mic thing. Like, and just like, like, even literally just uh, the past, the last 24 hours, like, have two big improvements have happened with yeah. this. It's like, that's awesome. that ordered the mics. So like this will be like one of the last podcasts with this mic, and then um, oh, no. <laughs> I'll probably do like portable ones. Like whenever I get like on the go somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that this will be the last one of that, and then I also did like a new intro video. I was like, oh, I need to make a cooler intro video. Okay. Oh no, no more chance. <laughs> oh no, I took him out. Yeah, I get like a, so I got a custom uh, theme song, and then I had it oh, over that's like awesome. over you this custom this, theme song. Yeah, over this. Did picture. you have someone help you make it? Or? Yeah, some dude. Some dude made like a beat. So I did Sweet. that. I did that Sweet. over the summer, like a few months back. Okay. And then I got a, it. Literally within the same twenty four hours, I got the the beat. Uh, he sent two separate beats, and I had like people like talk over it so it's like yeah it's one beat then it's like people four different friends going jordan's subjective perspective 
and then another oh, nice. beat that like segues into the video and then uh but then it was weird how i got both of these within 24 hours as well <laughs> uh but then i got a, a podcast picture uh that looks okay. like a lot more professional than oh the is original it the, picture. the mic in it like the mic that says Jordan's. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that one. That looks so cool. it's like it's a picture of me with the that was like a green screen in the background and then the the uh, logo as well. Cool, that's awesome. And then so it was, and then the until yesterday the theme song was uh, was just that picture uh -huh. and like zooming, like slowly zooming uh, from in to out. Okay. If that makes sense yeah, yeah, with yeah, that yeah. with that song playing, Can but then I now I just I'm like you know what I'll just make it cooler like a little bit more appealing to look yeah. at. So I did like a ton of clips kind of put together and and then the picture at the end. Cool. That's so awesome. just like the point is like just all these little incremental improvements. Yeah, slowly get to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. Like for me anyway, I like slow improvement because I think it lasts longer. It's more fun. Like I, yeah. I like like making these little. Yeah, like if I went from like this right here to like full production quality like nice studio it'd be like there was no process yeah the the beauty is in the struggle mm -hmm. it really is like, j cole <laughs> yes <laughs> yes i was hoping oh uh, yeah dude it's true though like whenever i was on the pct i i relate a lot to that but i mean it just happened but uh like my favorite moments looking back aren't the times when i stood there and stared at a beautiful thing and took a picture of it it's like the day where the mosquitoes were attacking me mm. and I was hiding in my tent and I just wanted to go home, but I didn't because I was like, no, I can't go home. Fuck that. That's crazy. Yeah. Like that, those are the moments I remember. Those are the moments that stick out as like really cool. The moments that were hard. Like when there was a ton of smoke around me and people were quitting and people were jumping ahead and I was just like, nah, I'm going to just keep going. And like, that's, that's where you find out like what you're made of, I guess. I like that. I like that a lot. That's how I see it. I mean, it's interesting to me, though, because like, a lot of people don't see it that way. They're like, no, I don't I don't think that's true. Mm -hmm. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion from their own perspective and their own experiences. And it's so cool that we can all have completely different experiences, which give us a different perspective. Mm -hmm. I think the world needs more accepting of differences. Yeah. We need to yeah. Really accept that just like, that person's different. Like you shouldn't want someone to be more like you. You should be okay with them being different and just accept it. And it's hard though. It's really hard because when you're dealing with things that are different, it usually feels uncomfortable for some reason or another. Like it hurts physically it, mentally. You're just like more exhausted because you have to work harder. Mm -hmm. You want that comfort, but it's, it's better in the long term to push yourself out of the comfort zone for a little bit of time. And then your comfort zone changes, you know? That's how I think about it. Yeah, that's a good point. It just uh, that's that's a that's an interesting concept to ponder too. Like that, it's changing. It's yeah. What well, you find comfortable today won't be what you find comfortable a year from now. Yeah, like no matter what you do, no matter what you do, if you do the same thing, you will get bored of it. Like at, uh, at points on the PCT, I was really freaking bored. Uh -huh. I was just like, I'm just hiking. I'm just hiking. And there were different points where I was like, I'm just hiking. Yeah, it's freaking awesome. I'm loving it. And like. I was doing the same thing. Uh -huh. But if you do the same thing over and over and over, no matter what it is, you will get bored of it. Uh -huh. So you've got to find something that you can be okay being bored doing, but push through because you've got some other reason that keeps you going besides just, I want to do it. And this goes back to the struggle. Yeah. Pushing through the uh, process. Yeah. Because, you know, the people who don't make it are the ones who struggle once and just quit. Because that desire wasn't strong enough. Yeah. I'm going to piss real quick. I've had to piss so bad. <laughs> no worries. No worries. It's weird. My attention span, like, it Whenever you stays, have to pee, yeah. It's, it's better. It's got, that's the weird thing. It's my attention span while I got to piss has gotten better. That's good. Yeah. That's like, a weird thing, that's but that's definitely thing good. That's a weird thing to improve upon, I guess. I'm probably going to piss, too, honestly. Oh. I'll take you to the bathroom, then. Oh, yeah. Put a pause on this thing. Oh, shit. It's six. Do you want to just call quits on my pause? Or? Yeah, that's cool, honestly. Okay. Just because I want to... I'm going to... I got to... I'm gonna cool. hang out with my parents. Tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Because I've been cool. I guess two we'll... nights neglecting them. My mom. Hour 18 minutes. This is our shortest one yet. It's alright. Gotta have some short ones. Oh, absolutely. That was... We talked for three hours last time. Dude, that was fun. I mean, some of it was just nonsense with Greg, but yeah, that was uh -huh. really fun. <laughs> alright, cool. This is, uh, this is Dunzo on this. Oh, I'm gonna pee so bad. Alright, cool. Do you have anything else to say?
Uh, stay curious, kids. Stay curious. <laughs>